Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. Our storm system has arrived. You're looking at solitude. Uh, ski area up here in Big Cottonwood Canyon of uh, Utah. Notice we've got the snow on the ground. The snow levels started very high across the Wasatch. I mean, they were at like 13 overnight. Now they've slowly fallen to a much lower elevation as colder air has uh, swept in. Let me take you up to Alta Ski Area over in Little Cottonwood and notice there's your snow accumulation up there as well. Um, so the snow levels will continue to fall probably down to somewhere between eight and 9,000 feet once we get the full, um, the full cool air filtering in there across uh, a lot of the, uh, the Wasatch. Um, it's also snowing in parts of uh, Jackson Hole this morning. Uh, there's your view up at Cody Bowl. Look at that, a new dusting of snow. Really beautiful photo right there. Kind of looking through uh, some of the snow and a little bit of sun trying to peek through um, the clouds in the distance. And the snow levels there started high as well, up at about 13,000 feet. And they've slowly fallen, now down to about 10,000 feet. But they'll continue to creep down to our lower elevation. This will be the case through the Wind Rivers, all the way up to Yellowstone, and even lower snow levels, as I'll show you, up into parts of Montana, where a lot of that cool air is going to come filtering in um, to that area. Um, so take a look at my uh, bullet points here this morning. So we've got it. There's our storm system. It is in play, and it is very windy across parts of Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. In Colorado, I'm forecasting some mountain wind gusts of 70, maybe even 80 miles per hour above tree line. Below tree line, probably 50 to 60, but that's enough to really blow the fall color off the trees. So this might be one of those storms that really scours that fall color and kind of brings it to completion. You know, we've been watching these beautiful colors now for weeks, but this might just blow it away. So this is really important info. Your rain, snow lines, again, everything started very high at the onset of this storm. Up at about 13 there in the Tetons, the Wasatch in Montana. Colorado was even higher, 14 to 15. It was very warm across Colorado yesterday. Now we're seeing all of the rain snow lines fall to 8,000 in the Tetons, 8 to 9,000 in the Wasatch, 7,000 in Montana, down to 10,000 in Colorado. There are your snow chances across the highest peaks. Obviously, that includes today, it includes tonight, and it includes tomorrow across pretty much all of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and Montana. Then there's another little secondary push uh, with a little storm system around 10, 11, 12, and then 10, 14, 15. You can see the uh, the best odds of snow in BC runs us all the way out through 10, uh, 10, 11, and 10, 12. All right, let me show you water vapor satellite imagery this morning. All right, you can really see the storm system in the spin right around there. So that's going to be our main storm system. It's tracking just a touch further south than anticipated over the last couple of days. So yesterday I thought the low might be somewhere right in here. Whereas today it's a little bit further south down in here. So that'll bring the snow chances a little further to the south. Not talking about a lot, but with the storm track running somewhere right in here. So still very windy on the south side of this storm track, but that puts most of the snow right along that storm track and to the north. And that's where we've got most of the moisture showing up with the whites, the blues, and even a little bit of greens. That's where you're, lo you're looking at water vapor here in the middle of the atmosphere. And so the drier air is down here in the blacks, the oranges, and those red colors. Um, let me show you what um, this is going to look like as far as a forecast radar goes. So let me load this in, pull this in here. So we'll start this at, uh, at roughly lunchtime today. So you're looking at roughly lunchtime today, Saturday, October 4th. Look at where the bulk of the precipitation is. And this is a forecast radar image. So when you see the, the greens, the yellows, the oranges, that's a more intense area of uh, precipitation. So the lighter colors, the little blues would be the lightest area, lightest areas of precipitation. Most of the precipitation is up here. Um, Northern Utah, Wyoming, and Montana. That's where the bulk of it is. Less precipitation indicated here across Colorado, but a ton of wind with that type of storm track. So let me move this ahead. All right, so here is 
dinner time uh, today. There's dinner time. Here's early on Sunday. So this is early on Sunday. Look at where the bulk of the precip is. Right there in Montana, Wyoming. There's a little bit across the High Uintas and a little bit through the central and northern mountains of Colorado. All right, here we are. There's lunchtime on Sunday. Again, just a little bit across Utah and Colorado, central and northern mountains of Colorado, but most of it's up here in Wyoming and Montana. All right, here we are dinner time on Sunday. Now, the low is probably somewhere right in here, and there's a little bit of cyclonic curvature pushing the precip down into the central to northern mountains, especially the front range high peaks of Colorado. So we'll see a little bit of precip in Colorado today, this afternoon, tonight, and maybe a little bit more tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and into Monday morning. Let's move ahead. In fact, there's Monday there's midnight into Monday morning right there. There's early Monday morning. And notice what happens. Some of that precip continues to get pushed down across the front range high peaks of Colorado. Maybe some rain showers or thunderstorms across um, the front range in eastern plains, Denver and the eastern plains, between Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, and into Monday as that low pressure uh, moves out. So there we are. There's lunchtime on Monday. The low is gone. Skies have cleared. And there's really not a lot left across the inner mountain. Um, let me just fine tune. Let me really zoom into this forecast. So this is a this is a point forecast for this is uh, up at about 12,000 feet and higher effective for the Long's Peak area up there in the front range high peaks of Colorado. So Long's Peak is a 14 or this is effective around 12,000 up to 14,000. And clear, look at the red dots. You see this, how it ramps up? That's forecast wind gusts. Uh, you know, that looks to be up to about 80, 85 miles per hour up there uh, above 12,000 feet. Um, and then you've got a, a little bit of a snow chance right there. That's going to be this afternoon, tonight. And then, like I showed you on that forecast radar, another shot of snow right there for Sunday afternoon, Sunday night into Monday morning. Um, let me just show you. Let me show you what this looks like. So... That red dot, that wind gust, is projected to be 84 miles per hour on this particular model uh, this afternoon, tonight, into Sunday morning. So incredibly high winds. Temperatures today up there at about 12, 12, 1, uh, high of about 43. And then the temperatures drop tonight into Sunday morning down into the 20s. So a we'll rapid drop in temperatures. A little bit of snow there. This, this cranks out about 3 to 4 inches of snow accumulation. So not a lot. Um, so wind and a little bit of snow there indicated in that forecast. Um, let me show you what it looks like in the middle of the atmosphere. So you've got what you've got here is effectively uh, you're looking at forecast pressure anomalies up at about 18,000. So you're looking at lower than normal pressures here across pretty much all of the inner mountain west with a big area of low pressure. We know that that's effective today. Looking ahead down the road, this is 10.9. Um, so you've got a little tropical system here. We've talked about this the last couple of days and a new low pressure moving into the West Coast. It's possible that some of this moisture gets siphoned up or sucked up into this new low uh, late next week into Friday, probably even Saturday. If that happens, that would affect the Intermountain West with some additional precipitation from that tropical system. Uh, here we are Sunday, 10-12. So you've got, uh, there's that area of low pressure. It's, it's pretty deep. Um, looks like it's probably about two to three standard deviations below the norm. So a pretty deep area of low pressure, and that would have already at this point sucked up that moisture out of that tropical system. And we're waiting on the system to really break loose and move through the inner mountain at that point. But it looks like it's happening there. So one storm now and then another one for late next week into next weekend. All right, here's the, uh, the time height forecast. Briefly, this is for Loveland Ski Area over the next 72 to 84 hours. So there's the current day, current moment. You go to this and go in this direction to read into the future. So there's a little bit of moisture there for Loveland Ski Area. Again, this afternoon, today, and then again tomorrow afternoon, Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. Not a lot, but could see one to four inches of snow accumulation. But look at this, more impressive, look at this folding right here of the pressure in the atmosphere. That is a very windy pattern as this storm system puts this 
part of Colorado on the windy side pinches the pressure gradient, and you've got flagging on a lot of the, the wind barbs. So again, 50, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds, uh, not out of the question between Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and Sunday morning, blowing those leaves all over the place. Here's your uh, forecast for Berth at Pass, so just down the road from Loveland Ski Area. And this, is, uh, this takes us all the way out through October 19th. This does produce an ensemble mean of about 5 inches, but there's the acceleration of snow over the next uh, 48 hours. And then it does ramp up a little bit more as we get into October 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there is some additional snow there with that second storm system. Here's your five-day snow forecast across the west. You can clearly see where the bulk of this is. Wyoming, Montana, with potentially, and I'll zoom in on this, over a foot of accumulation up there. You've also got snow across the high Uintas. You've got snow across the zones of Colorado. And those numbers across the high zones of Colorado have crept up versus yesterday because, again, that storm track is just a little bit further to the south. You've got snow running all the way up through Montana into BC and Alberta. Let's do a zoom. All right, you've got Wyoming, you've got a little bit of Utah and Colorado and Montana here. And right here, Wind Rivers, Yellowstone, Bighorns, that's, that's potentially 6 to 12 inches plus up there in those areas. Maybe 6 to 8 right here over the Tetons, above 10,000 feet. You've got maybe two to five inches here over the high Uintas. Now this is indicating a little bit more, and I'll zoom in on this here in a second, a little bit more, maybe up to six up there uh, above 9,000 in the Wasatch, all the way up to Snow Basin and beyond. And you've definitely got six to 12 up here through a lot of the Absaroka Beartooths and then up towards Big Sky. And look at Colorado. Now those numbers were starting to pop a little bit of that magenta, maybe up to six uh, seven inches potentially there as well. Zooming in on these numbers into Utah, again, maybe up to six inches for parts of the Wasatch, up to five there for the high Uintas. Um, let's go into Colorado. Again, these numbers have gone up a little bit. Now looking at up to six uh, southern mountains, potentially central mountains, especially the front range high peaks. You can see the, you can see the trend there. Um, across like Long's Peak, and I showed you that forecast earlier, very windy, but we could see uh, maybe up to four, five, six inches of snow accumulation along with very windy conditions there over the next 48 hours. All right, guys, there you go. So that's going to do it for this very windy weekend storm system. Utah's in the mix, Colorado's there, Wyoming, parts of Idaho, and certainly Montana all in the mix with this storm system. I'll keep things updated here. Thanks for tuning in. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.